yeah. This is not a drill, everybody. Dorm Debate Podcast is back. We're back, baby. We're, we're yeah. all back. Me, John, Caleb, all three of us are here coming back for a special occasion. The NFC Championship and the AFC Championship. Big the, weekend. Long we, waited. We are giving the people what they want. This has been a highly requested podcast. Yes, it has. We have had hundreds, if not thousands of comments <laughs> just <laughs> commenting on our YouTube video well, saying, bring back Dorm Debate. Bring, bring back, back Dorm, dorm debate. debate. Walking on the street, they, they grab my shoulder. We can't they, even walk around campus without somebody yeah, stopping. I was on campus the other day getting a cup of coffee, and they were like, oh my god. Are you Jared from Dorn Debate? And I was like, oh, Yeah, I, 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 they, they wanted me to sign autographs yeah, yeah. and things like that, and I couldn't. I had to get coffee and go to class. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I got, we hear you loud and clear, and we are just supplying. We're here. ready for this. Supply we're, yeah. the demand. Yeah, we're just supplying the demand. <laughs> uh, we took economics, we know. Supply yeah, and demand. Know we, know yeah. there. we know how this works. So we all know where this is going. We're going to start off with the NFC Championship. We have the thriving Los Angeles Rams versus the always good New Orleans Saints who uh, had a big miracle win a couple right. weeks ago oh, against okay. Caleb's Eagles. All right. Whoa. All right. I, miracle. That was off the cuff. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Caleb's <laughs> miracle. Butterfingers from Jeffrey. All right, let's get this not, started. All right. That is not... <laughs> it's, no a, one, it's a soft subject. Yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. It's still sensitive. So anyway, let's just forget that even happened. He's a great receiver, okay? Okay. <laughs> what, what was it? <laughs> follow up? So um, anyway, let's just talk about what matters, the NFC Championship. Now, uh, John, you've done a lot of research as of recently. Yeah. Um, tell me what excites you about this matchup right now. So, I mean, you know, the story of this NFL season is scoring. I mean, Kansas City versus the Rams, that yeah. game what a few a game. weeks ago, that was crazy. You know, everybody loves those 54-51 games. So the last time these two teams played, the Saints won 45-35. And these are the top two of the top four scoring offenses in the league. So I think, I don't know if we're headed for another shootout, but I think a lot of people are excited for this game. See, here's my question. You have Kansas City versus the Patriots, who had high-scoring matchup. Then you had the Rams versus Saints. Again, they had a high-scoring matchup. Do you think it'll be that many points put up in both those games? We'll start off with the Saints, obviously. So, right so, no. Honestly, something that I have witnessed throughout the playoffs in my previous years of watching football is that when it comes time for the playoffs, you have to have a good offense. Defenses, I feel like, will step up to the occasion. Just an example of that is uh, two weeks ago when the, or last week, whatever it was, when the Chiefs played the Colts. And the Chiefs have a horrible defense throughout the regular season. Rush defense wasn't good. Their secondary wasn't good. They still didn't have Eric Berry for that game. And they come out against the Colts and they just destroy them. I mean, mm -hmm. luck couldn't get anything going. Yeah. So I've honestly think that the Saints and Rams, I think it's going to be low scoring than people think. I think that the Rams came out against the Cowboys and just pounded the ball. I don't think that the Cowboys back seven played very well. And I think that the Saints will be up for that test because they were the second best rushing defense in the league, only giving up 80.2 yards per game. So mm -hmm. I don't, I think, it's, I don't think either team will get to 30 points in this game. 30 points? Yeah. It is a dome. It is and a dome. Weather, There's no it, weather. Yeah. Weather is not a factor in this. But this is NFC Championship game. I just, I think people come down to earth. People, coaches practice, like, study a little bit harder. These teams already played each other. So look at the... Look at the Saints and Eagles. They played earlier in the year, and it was like, what, 48-7 to 7 or something? Mm -hmm. And then the second time, the Eagles made it a little closer. The, the Saints only scored in yeah. the mid-20s. Yeah, 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 can, so, you, can you talk about, yeah. uh, talk about the Saints a little bit? Do you, uh, do, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you not like them or something? I, I, I don't want to bring my personal bias <laughs> into this podcast as an Eagles fan. Um, I'm still in mourning. <laughs> well, I will say, in response to what you were saying about the uh, the game, mm -hmm. I don't think either coach or either team will do the same thing they did last week. Uh, I think with the Rams being able to run the ball so much against the Cowboys, 
what you just said, the Saints have a really good run defense. Mm-hmm. And like you, you never know. It's football. Maybe they'll figure something out. They got two really good backs and Gurley and Anderson, which I was really surprised by CJ and really watched a lot of him. Team go off the way he did. I was impressed. Mm-hmm. And so both those players at the level they're at now, they can still do something against a defense that good. But it is, I, I think what they'll do is something different. Maybe with a combination of both to get them off their toes. Because you get the Saints into a rhythm in comparison to last week's game where they had like a ten minute drive against the Eagles. Mm-hmm. They're efficient enough to get going, so they got to get a tempo right out of the bat. And I. I, you need a run game to do that. So I think that'll still be important, but not as much to weigh in on as they did against the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Jared, do you have anything to add? Would you argue, in my opinion, I feel like the Rams are coming off. They're they're the team that's going like up, or at okay. least they're higher yeah. than where the Saints are. They literally almost lost to the Eagles at home, right? And not But no, that was the seven that was a six point game. Exactly. They, the Rams only won by eight. It's not like they destroyed the Cowboys. That is true, but, but I, it just felt like it felt different because the Cowboys had won the division. They had Cooper. They had Dak. It was like they were always on the rise, and then people started picking against the Rams, uh-huh. and they kind of just like put them that in their place true. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It didn't seem as close compared to like the Eagles, who were very, very close to winning. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It seem it seems different to me. It feels like the Rams, it, the X factor, C J Anderson. 100%. Yeah, for the last game, yeah, I was surprised. Madden, he was not as good as that. And no. I'm glad to see yeah. he's turned around. <laughs> I mean, he... I mean, what I said last week, like, Gurley comes in off his injury, and then Anderson was already running well, but this Rams offensive line is just like, all right, they look behind him, and they're like, all right, Anderson's a little bigger than Gurley, so we're just going to have to make bigger holes for him because he's just bigger. Oh, yeah, Gurley this season has dealt with injuries, right? And he's always been the back for the Rams. Like, they, they, don't, they haven't really had a, a good backup. Yeah. So to have C.J. Anderson come in and be able to rush for 100 yards and get a touchdown and to be able to rest Gurley and give him some breaks and then just come in fresh legs, that's uh-huh. why yeah. C.J. Anderson and Gurley both had 100 yards rushing. So that's very lethal. And then you look... At the Saints, and they've had a dual back system yeah. with Kamara and Ingram, but they they disappeared against the Eagles. Yeah, they weren't even true. a factor. I they mean, held them pretty well. The Eagles, Eagles had a good line and good run defense as well. But tying into that is what, something to consider for the Saints on the on the Saints side is I think they have a really good secondary. Those safeties back there in the corners and yes. obviously like linebackers can make a difference. Um, but um, Something that the Rams are gonna have to consider is to throw Breeze off his game. I think Breeze is really, really good. Not to say Goff is it six and zero, but Breeze is. Um, you got to get six pressure on him at home in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. it's a dangerous it's, number. When you have a guy like Breeze, you have to use uh, Sue and uh, Donald to. They have to get to him, uh, mm-hmm. pressure him, and at least get a get their hands on him a couple times, uh, because you're gonna. I, referencing the Saints secondary, I don't know if the Saints. Uh, if the Rams are going to be able to push all passing, like they're going to need that combination to catch them off their toes, like being able to run the ball, so they can't. The Saints secondary can't just be looking for the pass every yeah, play. Yeah, that's what um that's what concerns me the most about the Rams is that everybody's like, oh, look at their rushing game against the Cowboys, and they're going to do the same thing against the Saints. But what sometimes happens in this league is. The teams, like let's say the Saints are playing the Rams this week, the Saints will look at the last game and focus on that. They know how many yards the Rams rushed for. And if the Rams can't get that going, then I don't think they have the throwing arsenal that they had. They don't have Cooper (laughs) Cup anymore, who scored a long touchdown against the Saints in the last game. Maybe two of them, I forget, but he definitely had at least one long one. I don't think – I know Cooks is good, but if Lattimore's on him – and then you really only have Woods. I mean, I feel like I'm worried for the Rams in that they'll rely on the rushing game too much, and if it doesn't work out, I don't know if they'll be able to throw their way back into the game. Who's that um, the guy on the Saints, is it Hill, who can play different positions? Yeah, Taysom Hill. He could, Taysom be, he could Hill. be an unknown factor for the Saints in the next game, that kind of dual, the versatility that he yeah. has. Because he comes in... Special teams, defense, offense, yeah, and he can, return, he can like, throw the ball. Everything. I, I don't know if I don't know if you could trust him. He's a rookie, yeah. and if you you know these games, if you have one turnover, that could be huge. Right, right, and it goes either way. Just saying, kind of like 
the Saints need could use him in some surprising ways against uh, Sean McVay and the Rams because I think Goff is a great quarterback and the Rams are good to have him. Um, but Breeze is more experienced and might make less mistakes. And Goff has a team yeah. around him. But if Breeze gets the pressure from the D line and and it starts not not make mistakes, but if they start getting to him, being able to you know get some unique play calls in there to alleviate some of that pressure would be important using Hill or some or some other player. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering if if Goff or not Goff if McVay thinks Goff isn't going to start off well just because of the big <laughs> stage. I mean, he, this is the farthest he's been. Yeah, last year in the playoffs they lost the first Falcons, round. He, they didn't play very well. Yeah, at all. what's in a dome? What was that in a dome? Uh, they say that was not good. Home. That, was that was at, at home, home in Los Angeles. In the Coliseum, yeah. I don't know. It's first time. Was it? This is first Out, year, second year. This, in? Yeah, this is second year in yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, I'm it's wondering football if football sometimes they might run it a lot more than they did last week. Uh, run it a lot more. How yeah. much can, more can you run it? The Saints' defense is. <laughs> Their rush defense is too good. I see where you're coming from, but like... Because it's a young quarterback. That's right? You don't want to just throw him into the fire yeah. and, and do all these passes. I mean, their offense runs off of play action. If they're not running the ball well, Goff isn't the... Their offense doesn't run over Goff in the shotgun every play. He just yeah, that's the that. difference. I think if the Saints can't run... If they don't run well... They can still they can win the game. Yeah. But I think if the Rams don't run well, they can't win. Yeah. Mainly because Cooper Cup is out, yeah, which was their big. main rec- Who, who would have thought Cooper Cup would make a big difference? Yeah. But ever since he got injured, they have not been the same team, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Thing. And that same secondary is really good. But, I mean, Goff has a great deep throw. I think he's a good quarterback. I don't, yeah, I I think, I don't think, think it's fair to say the weather is an impact. I mean, weather's an impact on any player. It's just a factor. But I don't, I don't think he's a... You know, one one time, one playoff. It's, but I would bet on Goff making a mistake than than Breeze. Yeah, that's fair to point. say. But like to win the Super Bowl, to win the whole thing, you gotta have faith in who you are as a team and your quarterback. And I I, I think Sean McVay believes Goff's the guy. Like just thinking yeah. in his head. Um, not and he proved that at least uh, at the level he's at. And to win these kind of games, you can't play not to lose. You gotta play to win. So I think like if they believe in what they're doing, be creative, but stick, stick to, to your, your guns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have something to bring up. Um, so you know, last matchup, Michael Thomas, twelve catches, two hundred eleven yards, I was just gonna yards, bring that a up. touchdown, and Marcus Peters throwing shade at Sean Payton, Payton throwing it back. So what Big do you guys feud. think of that matchup? Hmm. I'm interested in Payton and, and <laughs> Thomas. between between <laughs> Peters and Thomas. Like yeah, was, no, no, no. Thomas got the best of him by far. Yeah, you know for a fact since that game. Every night when Peters Dude, goes, goes to bed, to bed he's he thinking. sees Thomas <laughs> running away from him yeah. to the touchdown to pick and picking up, up the cell, cell phone. phone. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's just angry when he goes to sleep every <laughs> single night. And this is the matchup that but he let me, wanted. But let me ask you a question. Let's say you're the defensive coordinator of the Rams. Do you put and him on you know Thomas? And you know what happened. And Peters comes to you this week and says, Coach, you know... I, you know what I happened last him. game, but you gotta put me on him. I'm gonna. There's no way. Like if I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm like, no. We just, <laughs> we got to lead back. We're either gonna play zone and try to double him. Sometimes I'm not letting you play one on one. Like what would you do? That's a very interesting question. Uh-huh. Talib Talib is a different corner than Peters, though. Yeah, he's more he's physical, not, but he's not as fast as Peters, right? I don't think so, but he's he's more physical. That's what you gotta consider. Like more the coach physical. has gotta know. It may be a, a like are. a thing of just getting in their head. Maybe I don't I, I don't know if you can go wrong with putting Talib on him. Yeah. But if you put Peters on and you get burnt once, like if, but once could be it, one too many times. Like very yeah. true. You make a very good point. I. I think you give Peters a chance because he's you know for a fact he's been stu- they this week he probably studied all the film on Thomas like if there's gonna be one person that can recover from this it's gonna be Peters but then how come like when you gotta give when him a everybody's shot. talking about the Saints right they're talking about Michael Thomas like what other receivers do they have they have Kirkwood they have Ginn they have Smith but like That's Thomas is gonna get all the catches so how come no team has been able to stop him. And you just think you're gonna put Peters on him and it's gonna work again? Like, how does Thomas get open every game? Like, all well, the time. Well, he's a great receiver. I mean, yeah, he's just one. the 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 Eagles game. And their corners aren't the the best. Like, That's true. We had struggles. Yeah, they had a struggling mm-hmm. secondary. This secondary is 
all pro, pro ball, elite. Yeah. Like, they can go man to man and probably, well, so. mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what they thought. Yeah. They, they could they could bring extra help now. I mean, seeing Thomas have the game that he did last yeah. week and then facing them during the regular season and seeing how he got the, the game-winning touchdown, they could see that and... It's kind of like, let somebody else beat us, not him. Exactly, yeah. Thing. They might just double-team him or, or bring some help with the safeties. I, I would put I would put Peters on him. Oh, my God. You, you, you know, like, that's who you want. It's like a... Yeah, but you okay. Can't. So let's say you put him on him. So either he plays well, or he's gonna be too anxious and he's gonna get penalties. No, then it's been, like he's, been he's gonna get a hot head. If he beats him once, then he's pissed, and now he's like, he's oh, been make him stupid. Week. Well, the best cornerbacks, you know, they make a mistake, they forget it the next play. Like that's that's how you yeah, know. He hasn't forgot it though. That's the thing. I, I don't know. I don't. You know, I I don't know the inside the mind of uh, Marcus Peters. <laughs> or uh, yeah, but um, what was I gonna say? I mean, there, you got it with a player as good as Michael Thomas. You got to consider the margin of error, in that the goal isn't to not let him get any yards. Like that caliber of player, he's gonna get yards, and he's gonna have big plays. Yeah, right. And I, I compare it to the first time, say from the Eagles' experience, when they when they really uh, beat our tail against, and the first time we played them, Eagles Saints, they uh, got a huge yards and you know ran up the score and all that kind of thing. And then the second time it was twenty to fourteen. It was close, but he still it was had a great game himself. Mm-hmm. And I compare it again because I'm an Eagles fan. Eagles Cowboys. Amari Cooper had a really big day, and Dak had a lot of yards. Yet it still went into overtime and a tie. Mm-hmm. So I think for the Rams, you got to consider well, what player is best capable to not shut him down completely, but limit mm-hmm. any yards after the catch, or at least make his day a pain, not easy, because he's gonna get yards. So I think you got to incorporate that into the game plan. He's gonna have a couple. You know, focus on the red zone defense. Maybe having to leave uh, to solidify one side of the of like on those other receivers that the Saints have, that could be smart in letting forcing Breeze for the big plays to take a risk on um, that matchup again with Thomas. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, an interesting stat is that without to leave, the Rams have given up thirty points per game, and with to leave in the lineup this year, they've only given up seventeen points per game. So that's a big difference. Yeah, to leave makes a huge difference, and I think. You put Peters on Thomas. <laughs> like, no help? No safety help? Like, just start the game off one-on-one. No, I not... think you see what their game plan is. Do, are they going to... Like, you first figure out the first two drives. Figure out what they want to do. If they want to incorporate Kamara and Ingram a lot more, and mm-hmm. maybe don't pass a lot. I think Donald is going to be huge to stop the rush. And they're not going to be able to rush at all, and they're only going to have to pass. Mm-hmm. The Saints? Yeah. I don't know. And they're able to win that way. Yeah. But with the corners that the Rams have, where are they going to go if Peters yeah. is on uh, Thomas, Tlaib is going to be on uh, maybe Ted Ginn? Mm-hmm. It's like, like the, they don't have enough receivers. At least with the Rams, they have Woods and they have Cooks. like, And then they have Gurley and CJ. I, I, I mean, they're both pretty well-rounded teams. They're right? pretty well-rounded, Because there are good yeah. other receivers, and I, I, I don't see the Rams stopping the run as well as we might think. Really? That's just... I know Donald got, and I know they got big too. names, but, you know, it's it comes down to, like, one player makes a, a, a difference, but you need the whole team to, to have that big impact. And, I mean, I think it'll come down. They're both really well-rounded teams, some strengths and some less strengths in other areas than the other team, but I think it'll come down to mistakes and which coach is clever, more smart, uh, smarter, and then uh, calling those matchups to maybe the matchup well, to leave on a receiver is tough, but if you get on the slant and you get, uh, or trips or someone in the slot and just playing around with it, see what you can get. Mm-hmm. I think that's what you do, and it comes down to who can outsmart the other coach because you got two really good, um, I mean, all, all the coordinators and everything on both sides of that field, so... All right, so I think we should talk about the impact players. So one person from maybe each team or just one person that you think has to have a big game for either the Rams to win or the Saints. You mm-hmm. want to start it off? Yeah, I think for the Saints, it's Taysom Hill. Oh, gosh. Oh, that, that was mine. So that, that, that was mine. We could both talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. I'll go for I guess for me, I, the play that sticks in my mind is the Eagles play. The fourth down? The Philly Philly? The fourth down, like, punt that he took 
up the middle? They no, no, not field. that one. No, the one the where he, it was the passing touchdown yeah, I got called got back. Called back. Tomorrow, yeah. Up the yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. But we, did he started at quarterback, correct? Well, he yeah, received one so. in the past one, I think. They both got like back. He, it's like a wildcat formation, except the player can run. Yeah. Or they can pass. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, when they're in that formation, hikes the ball, and then he starts, like, you know, tucking the ball, starting to run. He can stops. just pull yeah. back, chuck it up. I mean, and that play worked to perfection. Yeah. It just got called back early. But those trick plays, I think, can throw the Rams' defense off so much. That's true. And if they are if they work, it's great. If they don't work, it's going to blow up in their face. Yeah. Like, Dude. they either work or they don't work. And, yeah. like, it's not going to work for, like, 10 yards. It's going to be, like, big uh, yeah. play or it's just going to get awesome. blown up for, like, 15 yards yeah. loss. So Taysom Hill's... It's definitely the X factor. That, the okay, it's funny you say that because that was mine too. As I just said, like a minute ago, I mentioned Philly, Philly from the Super Bowl. Yeah, like, I know I'm an Eagles fan. It's my fourth time, but watching the Saints Eagles game, they're obviously in the Saints uh, dome at home. Um, uh-huh. When he's on the field, you can sense like a special play coming, and to yep. get that momentum, that motivation when the play succeeds, I think that's a factor that we have to consider when the Rams are away and the Saints are at home. When he's on the field, he gets those special trick plays, and in the shadow of like the Super Bowl Philly Philly, I think they they might pull up some tricks using Hill to get that momentum on maybe a fourth down again or you know, out of nowhere just using him to instead of Breeze just to throw off the defense, see what they do. Yeah, I mean when he comes in, you have no clue what they're doing. They can do anything. That's, that's the kind yeah, of, they that's, can literally do anything. He could pass it. He's he could run it. He could just hand it off to somebody. There's so many options. That's just, I mean, there's there's probably other players I could have mentioned, but that was the first to come to mind. Just that so he's, he's fun to watch, yes. and that's a good indicator. Spe- of good even, football. We're just talking about offense, but yeah, special yeah. teams, he had a blocked punt in one of the games. Mm. like, And then he had the fake punt. Oh. Like, yeah, good, good for yeah, he's, he's an player. all-around just Swiss Army knife. Right. I what think, about you? Who's your Saints? So I think that's a decent pick, but I don't know... I don't know if Sean Payton will be able to take the risk on him. Maybe a play really? here or there, but it's the NFC Championship game, and he's a rookie. So that's when you maybe a two you, point conversion. That's when you play around. Maybe. If it's close towards the end, if they're losing and they're down by like two touchdowns in the third quarter, then he might take a chance. But my impact player, the player I think has to have a big game, is Alvin Kamara. I mean, since this guy has come onto the team, rookie of the year, this guy, the offense is basically focused around him. He could run, he could catch. I don't know if you saw the game last time against the Rams, he had three touchdowns. I mean, that's kind of overlooked, two rushing touchdowns, a receiving touchdown. This guy, it's almost guaranteed he's going to have a good game. I think he's going to have over 100 all-purpose yards, two touchdowns. They're gonna to want to cover Michael Thomas, and if they don't, if the Saints don't go to Michael Thomas, they're going to Kamara. I mean, that's just how it works. So this guy's gonna have a big game, and I think it's gonna pay dividends for them. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at the rushing last game against the Eagles, and he didn't do much. Mm-hmm. But if they switch it, if they go to to a passing style, and they can't run the ball with Ingram or Kamara, and they lock down Thomas. I think I everyone's saying their second wide receiver would be Ted Ginn to throw to, but I think Kamara yeah, exactly. going on like a wheel route or like a V literally, route. Literally, he does those option routes where he'll run out of the backfield, literally run straight at the linebacker, and then it'll pick, it's an option, so he picks left or right, and it's so hard because he's so quick. Yeah, he, he's almost like um, like James White for the literally, Patriots. Yeah, exactly. So like he's as good of a receiver as he is a running back. Exactly. So he, yeah, that's very that's true. That's a good pick, too. That's a good pick. All Again, right. I think it comes down to the defensive line having to put pressure on Breeze. Right. Any of those options. Yeah. Can, I, I think that's going to be a big factor. It could not, could just be a high scoring game, but, and then who out shoots the other, you know, but that's a good pick because Kamara's the, that run pass. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kamara disappeared against the Eagles, and then now they're facing the Rams, which is a tremendously better defense. Yeah. How do you think he's going to respond? Oh, you mean that's what happens in this league. Everybody, so let's say the Saints are playing the Rams. The Saints are going to look at the Ram, what the Rams did against the Cowboys. They rushed a lot, so let's take away their rushing game. The Rams are going to look at what the Saints did against the Eagles. I don't know who had a big game there, but obviously Kamara didn't, so they'll forget about Kamara. He's going to have two touchdowns. I mean, 
<laughs> you guys both could answer this, or you don't have to. It doesn't matter. Do you think the Saints match up better with the Rams, and the Eagles matched up better with the Saints? So that that's why it was such a close game. Like, why was why was the Eagles and Saints such a close game? Is it just playoffs, or was it just the Eagles matched up better, or was it the coaching? I think it was the experience of the Eagles, because. I don't know. I just feel like with Foles back there, quarterback, he's done it before. This team has done it before with him in the playoffs. And I just think that they just played harder. I don't know. It's just, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think? That's a tough one. Cause... They definitely, the Eagles played much harder in this game than <laughs> they did in the regular uh, season to begin with. I, yeah, I feel like that was a close game. Uh <laughs> Obviously, keep but, bringing this yeah, up. Don't look at this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. Kid. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> All right, so but thinking about it, right? Uh, I, I, there's too many moving pieces, you know, different players, the matchups. Um, I, I, I can't tell you specifically why. I think you have to give credit to Jim Schwartz, the defensive coordinator, for that 10 minute drive. They, going into the game, a lot of the talk, and respectfully, rightfully so, was that how powerful, how high octane that Saints offense was. Mm hmm. And yes, in the hindsight, that ten minute drive hurt the Eagles, and kind of it was a long drive. It's unreasonably long. Um, but to be able to do that against such a good defense, and you know, with the injuries the Eagles had, and we we did have some corners back, which um, cor- corners uh, returning from injury, which was a big thing, like LeBlanc and Maddox. That was huge. As an Eagles fan, it was tough seeing them. So having them helped too. But I think some of the trickery, some of the play calling uh, on the defensive end, that's like the coordinator Schwartz was calling. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously we lost and I think that play ended up in the Saints scoring but it still limited them for 10 minutes against that could have been offense so I, again that's why I mentioned in the beginning I think it comes down to how the how the Rams um, that's a football IQ how they can match up yeah. intellectually alright so let's uh, are, so are we gonna score predictions score predictions or, um, just, or just 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 picking just teams just picking teams yeah, so we're just gonna make a fool out of ourselves with the score prediction. Well, why not though? Because like, what <laughs> you want to? Well, let's let's just, say, just to see if it's. Do you yeah. think it's gonna be high or low score? Yeah, like, high or low. We'll do some numbers that are just from the heart. They yeah. only have to make yeah. mathematical sense. Okay, my pick: Saints Rams. I'm gonna go with the Rams, and a little upset win in uh, New Orleans. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna say. <sighs> Shoot out. Both teams over 35 points. Holy moly. Okay. okay. You can call that. Uh, that's a bold that, statement. That's, that is pretty bold. I want that to happen so bad. It'd be fun. Just to see. I want, like, haymaker after haymaker. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want to see. See who blinks first. Yeah. Okay. Caleb. You can go All right. Um, as an Eagles fan, I obviously <laughs> like to see the Saints lose uh, just because of that. It's still fresh. The wound is still fresh. Uh, nothing against Breed as a person, and you know that that's there's a team right there. Uh, <laughs> I I think either team can win it. They're both so well rounded in my mind. Um, but I'm gonna go with the Rams because of my uh, bias against the Saints. <laughs> <This week. laughs> that's literally your reasoning. <laughs> but I I think it's gonna come down that's... to what I've mentioned a few times. It's like who's gonna make mistakes, who's gonna blink first, and mm-hmm. um, I think it will be a shootout because I don't know. Both got good old lines. I don't. They got defense, good D lines too. But I think they're gonna give the quarterbacks time and just see who can, what offense can out offense the other. But mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say uh, 42-37 Rams. Oh my so god! Above, above thirty five. <laughs> Holy I right. want. I want to see a good game. So okay. Okay. if I listen in the future, I, I let my bias get in the way. So we have one so, Saints. I mean, we have two Rams. Oh yeah. wow! All right, uh, we got a, no Saints. Pressure's right. on. No Saints. Okay. So <laughs> are we gonna <laughs> go for the clean sweep? We'll see. Yeah. So clean sheet. Yeah. One stat that uh, <laughs> took a little bit of digging that you guys will not gonna believe, but uh, you know who the referee for this game is? Gene Sterritt. <laughs> <laughs> I would pull out that index card. <laughs> All right. So innovative. The referee for this game. You're telling me the ref is gonna make a difference. Uh, listen to this. So the referee for this game is Bill Vinovich. Never heard of Do you know what that means? Exactly. That means that he has co- he has refereed the Rams game eight times this year, and they have gone zero and eight when he's refereeing <laughs> the game. <laughs> this is 
serious. This well, is why I waited for you guys to pick the Rams. <laughs> no, that's not the reason I'm picking the, <laughs> the Saints. What was that? <laughs> that's not the reason I'm picking the just Saints. One but that's just one of the reasons because I think that Breeze is too smart. Peyton is too smart. They've been here before. I'm not ready to they make the jump on us. Rams. I mean, I don't. Th- I think the Saints will shut down their run game. And not completely, but they'll shut down Anderson and Gurley enough. I don't think either of them will get to 100 yards rushing. And I don't think Goff is able to step back and be able to – if they get down, I don't think Goff will be able to come back. So mm-hmm. score prediction, 26-23 Saints. I think defenses will step up. It's going to be no team will get to 30 points. Mm-hmm. So that's it for the Rams versus Saints. Now right. let's transition. It's interesting this year. For Caleb's sake, it's let's brutal. transition yeah, to the other conference. Let's move on. It's There's interesting no this. this year because you have, in, on the NFC, you have Breeze and you have Goff. So one guy that's really experienced and one guy that doesn't have a lot of experience. Then you go over to the AFC side. Same thing. Obviously, Brady, a lot of experience. Mahomes, not a lot of experience. Because but because young and want it. They, you can they see want a it. matchup where it's like two of the oldest quarterbacks, most experienced, yeah. or two of the youngest this is up and coming. It's next crazy how deal. it worked out like that. And all four of these offenses finished the in the regular season with the best scoring, like top four scoring mm. offenses. So what do you guys think? think? Yeah, let's talk about that. So the game's in Kansas City. Mm. Cold. Right, AFC Championship. Cold, cold, cold. Kansas City Chiefs, New, New England Patriots, eighth straight year for, the, the, New, for the New England game. Patriots. This game, in fact, is not in a dome. It is outside in the freezing cold of Kansas City, Missouri. I mean, okay. Massachusetts is pretty cold too. You what? Know. what are you saying? For, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, I'm not. If, talk, if I'm not saying Brady isn't there. ready. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I'm just saying. No, weather, weather, I'm just implying it, weather is affect everybody. Cold. Yeah. I I think Colin Cowherd said it. Um, <laughs> he said that the home field advantage um, was not going to be a thing in Kansas City because. People were going to be so cold that they're going to be bundled up. And, and they have, won't be able to cheer. Yeah, they're, they're going to have, like, scars over their face and stuff. And they actually not, said that? Yeah. yeah. They're Has not he gonna... ever been to a football game? <laughs> <laughs> and the, like, Chiefs, the Chiefs, like, tweet, the, their, like, official site, like, tweeted back to him, like, something like, like that. have you ever been to a game? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. They say sitting indoors on a microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to go to a game. The man. heat on high. But, <laughs> Let's be real. Like, I see what he's saying, but that's come on. The come fans, on, dude, like, it's a freaking play. Well, he chose game. the Patriots Everybody's last year against the Eagles, so I remember that. Dude, he he predicted this game, and he said this game is like he's never been so sure. He said like on Thursday he was making his picks Friday. He's like, I am ready to jump out of my sheet seat. I can't even contain myself because <laughs> yeah. he actually picked Kansas City to win this game. He did. Wow. So even after saying that there'd be no home support. Yeah. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> he picked Kansas City and he's super confident. So what do you guys think? Well, I'll tell you one thing: the fans don't win the game. The players do. Okay. So it's all about the players. And the only player that you need to know about in this whole game. Is TB is, is TB twelve? This isn't your prediction. You can <laughs> say that. you're acting like this is your prediction. Your... It's Tom Brady. <laughs> Too much suspense. <laughs> it's not Andy. I want to know. It's Tom Brady. The, all you have to you have to look at the Patriots roster and you say, who do they have? Who could they pot? Tom Brady. Okay, it's over. They've won. It's over. So you look at Tom Brady. And but, say, but the last three AFC Championship games they've mm-hmm. played on the road, mm-hmm. they've lost. Interesting fact. I didn't and know. And now they're versus the best score. Before off. I said some <laughs> stupid things. I said it before we even sat down. <laughs> I'm like, was, do you want a stat? Okay, here it is. You're like, <laughs> you, were full, you were setting up the microphone. Yeah. No, so, but all, no, all like, honestly, like. I mean, stats like now that, we're on to my Chargers here. Stat, they make you wonder if what goes up must come, must come down. You know, yeah. It doesn't matter about anybody else on the field. Come it on. doesn't matter. They've lost it games. Doesn't, it's not like they don't lose. Yeah, to the NFC East. They, don't, <laughs> they only lose. they don't lose to anybody in the AFC. It's Tom Brady. He knows what he's got to do. He's got a limited time frame left his wife's getting angry at him okay. he needs to win oh, now if he doesn't win now 
So you're Could saying be a divorce it's all about him. All right, don't. All... <laughs> okay. Don't bring the man's family. So this, a kid, this a guy has to, a kid. I'm sure they're, they're very happy together. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, on the road this year, they've lost, they've, they're only like, they're like, they've lost like four games. I think all four games they've lost on the road were against non-playoff teams. Dolphins, Lions, Jaguars, Steelers. They lost all those games on the road and none of those teams are playoff teams. That's the regular season, though. This is playoffs, baby. And playoffs. They've lost, and they've lost three AFC Championship playoffs? games on the road. <laughs> what do you have to say, Caleb? Yeah, give me, yeah. come on. Let's see. Okay. I, I see where you're coming from. Um, because Tom Brady is that kind of player. If One Tom Brady's playing, time, you, do you whatever, need to know about the other team? It, I mean, the Eagles. It's not like... The One Eagles man doesn't beat. win a team. Uh, uh, one doesn't win a game. Wait, but he, has a big, <laughs> but he, has, he has a big impact on the game, right? Uh, one person, but he's also only one side of you know of the. There's only one defense and offense. He's only on one side of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it feels like this season. The, every, every year, the Patriots have problems. So it's not to say that they can't make the Super Bowl this year, because but that loss against the Dolphins, or they, they lost some weird games this season. That I was surprised to see the score lines where. They should have games. They should have won. They lost. There's kind of uh, I, you know, Gronkowski hasn't been playing as well. With I think Kelsey and Ertz have been the best um, at tight ends. Mm-hmm. Gronk is still amazing, but um, those factors are something you got to consider. And then the away thing. It, I think it just comes down to I think Andy Reid has coached the Chiefs really well. I have a really great quarterback that is really. Precise has been really fun to watch. I mean, probably MVP creative. Or creative. He's like an Aaron Rodgers, but younger, more mobile, um, with a brilliant deep throw. And again, he's only one. Mahomes is only one piece too. Yeah. And so one thing I worry about the Chiefs is uh, they they're the number one offense, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't statistically in the past number one offense generally loses because their defense isn't as good. And I think that's been said about the Chiefs this year is that their their defense hasn't been as good, which I don't think is as accurate as people might feel it is. <laughs> um, they, they have a great defense. And can that defense put pressure on Brady and shut down some of those other outlets that he might have or at least get him uncomfortable in an away game for him in a, and then give Mahomes the time to need to establish a tempo and for the Chiefs to play their game, because against the Patriots, teams that get hesitant, they get scared, you can feel it as a viewer. And so if they just stick to their guns, go for it on fourth a couple times, Don't maybe don't always settle for the field goal. You have the best offense, uh, statistically. Go for okay. it. Play. You know, you're playing to win. Like You, you don't hold back in this thing. You give it your Kinda all. Kind of like Peterson some, did last year. That's how I look just at it. Just kept going. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you need that kind of mindset going into it. They're a great, <clears throat> the Patriots are a great team. They have some great... Minds on both uh, players and, and the coaching staff, of course. Um, but you got to believe if you're a Chiefs fan, player, or coach, that you have you, you know what you're doing too. And um, football's football. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You you, you got to trust who you are on that day. And in, the, in these in these high caliber games, it's not when you start saying, "Well, maybe they'll." You want to make them react to you. Is my mm-hmm. mindset. Okay. Um, I have something to pose to Jared. So, so let's say you look at this game and you take away all the players, and you just look at, well, you, you literally just take it, analyze the game and the teams by position. Mm-hmm. Which team has better Kansas players? City. Yeah. If you're just looking but at so this game. so the Chargers. Exactly. So um, what are your thoughts on that? That's a big thing. I mean, the, the pro- I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the, one The thing. Chargers have a better roster than the Patriots. The Chiefs have a better roster. They have playmakers. The only playmaker on the Patriots is Brady. There's nobody on the defensive well, side. Edelman played really well against the Chargers, too. Edelman played he's not gonna, James He's way. never yep. going to have a huge touchdown. I mean, they play well. I like... Did you see um, beast, that man. Edelman's shirt that he had? Uh, he had made. He was wearing he a, shirt. a shirt. It said... Um, this week? Bet on us. This week? Yeah, or, this week. It was like bet on us. Or, or bet against us. Bet against us. That's the shirt. Oh. It put a shirt on said bet oh. against us. Because... Tom Brady had the post game interview, and he's like, "People think we suck." Blah blah. blah. Yeah. I think this Patriots team is coming together, and like saying an underdog mentality. They're saying of. like, there, "There's there's no respect." We have five Super Bowl banners, uh-huh. and they're saying we're a terrible team. And blah blah. blah we're not going to go anywhere. And I think that's coming together and having the motivation to win another Super Bowl just yeah. from that. So. 
I, I, what was your question? I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> I just post something. You just, just post something. Yeah, you just, just get it get on your heart. Well, your like, heart. it's funny because if the Patriots win, would you say it's an upset? I because mean, they're well, the lower seed, I mean, right? They're not but they've favored, been there eight so times. Technically, you would say Kansas City upset. is favored, so I would technically say it's an upset. The and Patriots are trying to but upset. But if, if the Patriots Jeez. win on Sunday, we're all going to be like, oh, there it is again, blah, blah, blah. But if Kansas City wins, it's going to be a riot on Twitter. Even though they were favored. <laughs> like, Even though they were favorite. Yeah, the seeding to me doesn't... You know? The seeding to me, it's the math of the 16 games leading up to it. So however that yep. ends at the 16th or I guess 17th week with a bye, mm-hmm. that's just the math. So then it, I, you're, you're right. Technically, the underdogs... Like, I don't think the seeding is always the determinant factor of what makes you the less favored. I think it comes down to what, are the anal- what do people think, what do the analysts, what do smart people who are in this industry think and have seen that maybe the normal viewer haven't seen. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, so, uh, but there, yeah, I, I see what Tom Brady was saying because he was referencing that every year there's debate about whether oh it's over now or it's over now, and he's still a great yeah, player. Yeah, and they keep showing. And it up. must, as good as he is, it must get annoying. So I see where he's coming from, but it is I don't see anyone thinking that either team's an underdog. It's just a good. It's going to be a good battle between two good teams. You, at least you hope it won't be a blowout either way. Blowout either way. That reminds me, um, when you were saying about Brady in the post game conference. That same day, Gurley came out. Well, he was in the post game conference, and somebody asked him, like, "Like, how does this feel? Like, you you're not ending your season." And Gurley's like, "It's tough to get here. Like, this is not easy to get here every year. Like, nobody. Like, it's hard yeah. to be very consistent. Nobody does it unless you're the it, Patriots. It's not guaranteed." <laughs> like he said that, I'm like, uh, I mean, wow. to me, I, I, I this might be a little bold, but I feel like in my eyes, and this is an exaggeration, I understand. To me, I feel like the Super Bowl for the Patri- for the Patriots is with the Chiefs right now. In my eyes, I think the Saints. So you think if they win this, if the Patriots win this game, that they're you're gonna win the Super Bowl? That's that's my bold. Oh, wow. the, my bold thinking. Um, looking at the Rams or Saints, yes, any they can beat them, but from what I see as a, as you know as who I am, <laughs> I feel like the Chiefs have a better shot out of. All the three remaining teams, other than, than who aren't who aren't named the Patriots, in my eyes. So if the Patriots do, and I think they get an edge in terms of yeah, there are these things against them and the good players. But what Jared was saying is that you you got a guy like Tom Brady. I I it makes me nervous. See him going against the team with Goff and the defense and the Rams and um and same with the Saints. The Saints have a very good shot too, as well as the Rams. But I just I I feel like uh, the shootout, the biggest shootout, will be on the Chiefs side, maybe. Uh, and if the Patriots move on, I think I, I have trouble seeing how other teams may beat that. And I, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying they're not in a position they can't. I, that's just kind of my my view right now. They are a good team, and you need a kind of team that is going to force them to, re, like I said earlier, react to them. Um, so that's that's my bold thing is if the Chiefs move on, then I think we have a good game in the Super Bowl. I, I weirdly I know that doesn't like equate out, but. I think the Chiefs matchup with the Rams or Saints would be really exciting, but the Patriots uh-huh. or someone else might be kind of what we've come to expect as football yeah. fans in a few years. That's just, you know, my feelings. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you do you think what effect do you think Belichick will have in this game? Because Yeah, I was just gonna bring up the coaches. There's one stat I have that Belichick is five and one in the playoffs when he's facing the number one scoring team. So the Chiefs are the number one scoring team, and he's five and one in the past. So what do you, what effect do you think he'll have on the game? Um, Will be he be able to game plan, or it's just impossible? Who was the number one that they beat? Do you know? I think it was five um, and one. When was that one? <laughs> I'm not sure. It was that's just through his coaching career. Okay. They've won five and one in the playoffs. Well, because Andy, Andy guess, Reid's a good coach too. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think he's learned a lot. I mean, obviously he's an Eagles. Coach, he was really good. Mm-hmm. But I think I for mean, Andy Reid, this this game is like his Super Bowl. The thing is, is, he's yeah. changed a lot, Andy Reid, as a coach and the kind of calling and the kind of organization he's running with the Chiefs versus the Eagles. I think it's good. He's adapted to the new game. Yeah. He so does. it's not the same Andy Reid who lost to uh, Belichick in the Super Bowl. On you know, it's a different, it's a different animal. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Belichick's a great coach, and that's a. You know, I, I don't even know what to consider when it comes to him. But not as Andy Reid could have something up his sleeve too. Yeah, I think for Andy Reid, I, I would argue this is a must-win 
for his legacy, for his coaching career. Mm-hmm. This is a must win. If he loses this again... I, I mean, he still has next year. Mahomes is young. Yeah, he's got next year. But at some point, he's got to beat the Patriots, right? Am I wrong when... I can't bring out the Eagles, but Andy <laughs> Reid Andy Reid was the coach when they I'm lost. A Cowboys fan here. To the, I know. Yeah. Andy Reid was the coach when they lost in the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. So it was Belichick. Belichick and was, was there. He lost to Yeah, McNabb, and McNabb was a great co- quarterback. Right. They have something special in, in Mahomes, too. Yeah, I feel so like I don't, I don't for, know for Andy Reid to be in the conversation with the Belichicks and Sean Payton and all the other great coaches. He's got to beat the best. Mm-hmm. And once he, this is his Super Bowl. He should look at this and say, this is my Super Bowl. This is a must-win game. And then then look forward. But, like, you have to beat well, you know, Belichick. It's it's so much deeper for Andy Reid than just, sure. you know, making he, the Super Bowl. He hasn't won it as a head coach, sure. But I actually found out he, only, like, he already has a ring with, I think, Green Bay as an assistant coach somewhere. It's like he's been to yeah. the, he's been to the mountaintop on some level before. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's you know to give him credit he's never been there. You know, so right. But you're right as a head coach is a completely different thing. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Like this, I I just don't think of it. I if I was him, I wouldn't look at it as oh I got to beat this man and you know establish my legacy. It comes down to you know it's it's a Sunday football game. You have your players that he has his, and you gotta you gotta play it the best way you see it, and then like. Don't get so caught up in the in the Patriots juju of oh they they are that coaching duo with Brady Belichick is one yeah, of the I best think of all the time. Chargers let him get in their head a little bit. I think watching that just yeah. too good because I saw the Patriots running some defenses that I think threw Philip Rivers off and I don't think I think Philip Rivers played well enough but didn't have help in other places that he normally would have mm-hmm. but that's because the Patriots got in the way of letting those players that normally would help him do it. But I think if you get nervous, you can't. So I think, you know, don't think about legacy. Don't think about all oh, next year's. Just think about you have this, this one Sunday, game. one play at a time, and just don't forget who you are. I, I like that. I think Reed can do that. Is the absence of Kareem Hunt still haunting the Chiefs? I was just going to say something about Hunt. <laughs> I, think, think? I mean, so when the Patriots beat the Chiefs 43-40 or whatever it was earlier in the year, they had Hunt on the team. Yes. And he had touchdowns. So I think it's gonna come like I and their think offense really hasn't put up that many points. I mean, it's still been good, but it hasn't been what it was and when Hunt they beat was the there. Chargers in the beginning of the season with Hunt. Then Hunt was gone, I believe, and then we went in Kansas City and won. Mm-hmm. It's 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 the who's the running back now? Damian Williams. Damian Williams. Didn't they have another one too? They only they have, have a Spencer Ware. Yeah, Ware and Williams. They're yeah, not, like a dual. Yeah, which the they're. Um, their um, average, like they'll, yeah. they, they'll suffice for like yeah. the temp- for like screen passes and things like that. But mm-hmm. when they want to like actually run the ball, yeah, is that going to be a problem? The, these players, I don't think they've been pff, anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> but Spencer Ware was there's on. Been talk, he's been on the Chiefs for a while. There's been talk that Belichick might like let them run. Because you don't want Mahomes to drop back and pass no, 50 times. Not. So do you let him get five yards here, five yards That's there? And then yeah. like when they get towards midfield, maybe really shut him down? I don't know. I've it's, heard that too. I think a commentator was saying that counterintuitively, I think it was Belichick, saying to this team that you're going to have to give up yards, which is something you don't tell a defense yeah. normally. But in this case, it's for that same mindset. Yeah. The quarterback is so good that let him rely on the run that will stop. Let him be fa- happy the that they're getting four or five yards. Right. What I think could be good, I, I think the first, I think the Chiefs did the right thing and what Reed did in, in that situation with Hunt. Like, I don't think they should have kept him mm-hmm. just to, to win a game. Of course. Um, right. But um, it could be almost a blessing in disguise that they can't use Hunt anymore because it forces them to change. Because those Ware and Williams are not the same players as Hunt. Mm-hmm. Hunt was great as a player in, in, those, in those capacities he's had. But maybe, I don't think they're bad running backs either. Um, I don't know if they're just good enough either. I think they could be used in more creative ways than when they originally played it, almost like an unknown factor that could go in the Chiefs' favor by making that coaching staff say, hey, we can't rely on just one guy to get us the run. So with the two different people, what can we do incorporating sc- like you were saying, screens and things like that? So it could be a blessing in disguise. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Any other points before we move on to impact players? Yeah, let's go to impact players. All right, so I could start this one off. Um, surprisingly, I'm going to go with another running back. I'm going to go with Sony Michelle. I thought he would have to have a big game last week against the Chargers. I think he's especially going to have to have a good game this week 
against the Chiefs. You want to keep Mahomes off the field. The Chiefs have given up five yards per carry during the regular season. And believe it or not, the Patriots are 10-0 and when they have over 100 rushing yards. So Sony Michelle is going to be a big part in this game. I know James White out of the backfield, but I really think when they use that run game, not the short passing game, I think the run game is going to have to be effective. Keep that ball out of Mahomes' hands. Take the clock down. I mean, that's why I think it's going to be lower scoring than it was in the previous matchup. You got to have, I think Sony Michelle is going to have over 100 yards and at least one touchdown, and I think he's the key to this what game. What about James White? I mean, you think, you he think had the, 50, Sony Michelle will do better? I think, yeah, I think he's more of an important player. You, I mean, James White is good when they want to get down the field. You, you can go to James White whenever you want, but I think establishing that run and keeping the ball out of Mahomes' hands will be really important. Yeah. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Um, for the Patriots, it's gonna go going because you just mentioned just the Patriots in back. But yeah. Okay, I'll go with the Patriots. Long. I'll just say, I mean, seeing the games, it could be anyone because they do do a great job of changing up who can be that player. That quotation marks. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll just say for this game, Tom Brady. Uh, of course, he's great. He's a great quarterback, and, and he is the quarterback. But I, I think if he him, if he has a bad game right right i'm not even considering his age just like i think a lot of that offense relies on him mm-hmm. and if there are overthrown passes deep those big plays that are can like if a, a team as good as the chiefs are going to need some maybe 20 30 yard plays into their secondary and to get the ball there and get it accurately for brady um consistently in that weather i mean he's used to playing it but i, I think that's something to watch um because i've seen throughout the season some of some overthrown passes he can still hit those don't get me wrong but it'll be interesting if he has a bad game. Well, mm-hmm. what what about, like... And he has Edelman, that, so Edelman's yards after catch it could be yeah, something, too. And, but they played the Eagles in the Super Bowl, and the Eagles scored, what, 45 points, somewhere in the 40s, and Brady, like, if he feels like scoring, he can go down the field. They didn't... Well, Cooks he had his best statistical Super Bowl yeah, ever and Cooks year. wasn't on the field. Yeah. Edelman was out for the season. Like, well, not Edelman's their... Is Edelman their best receiver? Right now Cooks? he is. So but Cooks, who, who are the other receivers? I mean, you have Gronk. Hogan, Gronk, Hogan's but in brilliant. the Super Bowl, Cooks got knocked out by Jenkins, and then Edelman Gronk. was already missed that whole year. So like Gronk came out to be Brady a basically in the did half. it with nobody. Yeah, yeah, he's and again, he's a, that's why he's a, he can hit those throws. He can get passing yards. It, it comes down to had it been any, anything less, the Patriots would have a lot harder day that day. Um, mm-hmm. And I think uh, Chiefs are really on that level too, on the Super Bowl caliber team. Um, so he's gonna have to. Uh, he doesn't. I don't think. I don't think any player ever has to do something. There are eleven other, ten other guys in the field, but um, I think for Brady it'll be important to, you know, again, stick to what who he is and what. Uh, same for the Chiefs. You know, stick to your guns. All right, Jared. I'll I'll go with a Kansas City player just for the sake of balance. That's okay. good. Okay. Okay. I think you're forgetting about the cheetah. Oh, oh there he is. Ty, oh, he can ruin a game. Hill. The Olympian. Yeah. Tyreek Hill, Olympian. I love that guy. Yeah. He was on my fantasy team last year. You Did you see that play when they played the Patriots and Mahomes threw it deep, they were on their own 20, and Hill goes up, catches it, and oh, by the yeah, time yeah, he turns the and the safety looks at him, Hill literally is around him. Nobody even touched him. Yeah. He that gets, was the he catches it thing. and like sets his feet like a sprint, and a standing sprint, and then his acceleration <laughs> is I mean, crazy. I, have you seen him in the, in the Olympic? I think he ran the 200 mm-hmm. meter. They put a line of how fast, I think it was Bolt ran, for a while, for the acceleration part, he was at that line that Bolt oh was running. God. Of course, it's Usain Bolt, but still, not every receiver is at an Olympic sprinter level. Sprinting mm-hmm. is very hard. Mm-hmm. I, I did track one year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's hard. <laughs> it was my senior year, so I didn't have a choice. <laughs> but I can tell you from one year, it's very hard. But um, yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a, that's, a good, that's a good pick. I, yeah, like, I, I mean, like that guy he, a lot. Arguably one of the fastest players in the NFL. Uh, there's so many things you could do with him. They they run uh, jet sweeps with him. They can throw to him deep. You can throw to him on a crossing route and let him just go freaking wild. <laughs> I, if he has over 100 yards, it's going to be hard for the Patriots to keep up. Mm-hmm. But I, I say he's an impact player, but I don't know with the weather... I don't know how well they're going to be able to pass the ball in general. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think they're going to struggle a lot more uh, than the Patriots because it's just no Kareem Hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But if they can get Tyreek Hill hot and he's feeling himself and they can get some jet sweeps, they can get some trick plays going, like, Mm -hmm. then and that offense starts going. Because if Tyreek Hill doesn't do anything, it's just the the offense is dead. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I I mean, like, I like that for impact player. I like your pick for him a lot for that. mm -hmm. Um you're right. Who can who who do the Patriots have that can maybe out like who could right. so who, who in the can NFL? Them? Who in the NFL <laughs> who can, can outrun guard that him? man? You know, I was talking. You have to, to a... give him space, and the, you have to have the, those backs be able to close in on him, and you know, no, hope Mahomes has time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's he's a good. I like him for that, for uh, that pick. Jason McCourty for the Patriots is very fast. Right, right. He's a good cornerback. And if there's anyone that could come close to Tyreek Hill. Like for a defensive back, I think is he safety or a cornerback? Corner, Jason. Corner. Yeah, so he's very fast. So they could try to lock down Tariq, but it all dep- it really all depends on the weather though. If the weather's terrible, who knows? I what don't can think happen. it's gonna be precipitation. So if it's like, if it's, it's just gonna be cold. Yeah, but then the ball doesn't fly if right snowing. if it's cold. You know? uh, if it's deflated, maybe the, the oh <laughs> the <gosh. Patriots. laughs> no. But last time when the Patriots played the Chiefs earlier in the year, you know Belichick wants to take away your best player, and the Patriots decide to take away Kelsey. I think that yeah. kind of changes a little. I think they're going to try to take away Tyreek Hill. Yeah, the change. Yeah. Limit those big plays. Yeah, yeah, if I had comes to, down to limitation. If yeah, if I had to pick more than one, I would also say Gronk. Just yeah, just because he's due. Can't sleep yeah, he something. is due. Can't sleep on Gronkowski. Can't yeah. sleep on him. I mean, he's well, as team. soon as you do, yeah, then he pops out of some game and gets a hundred yeah. yards, two That's touchdowns. The they won't throw to him, and then you forget. You I mean, forget about him, and all of a sudden, right, right? He's still a great. T- yeah. I mentioned Ertz and Kelsey being, I think, the top two, but it's because. Yep. That's just because we're so used to one guy, Gronkowski, being number one every year. Like he's still a great tight end. It's he's just, great. They don't just, use, not every team uses him. The Patriots don't use him every every play to be that guy. It's the injuries. I don't know how long. I mean, there was talk that he was going to retire last year. Like, well, got to so, do what's best for them, you know, and their health for sure. But yeah, not that Tom Brady even if he needs him, like he's one what <laughs> three without him. Yeah, you know, so it's not. That's why I didn't pick him as an impact player. But yeah, so that'll be important to watch too for the Patriots. Yeah. Final verdict, boys. <laughs> I'll call it Prediction numbers too. Just like a high low of a number. All right, go ahead. Um, I'll go first. Uh, uh yeah, I'm still yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sticking with. <laughs> oh, he's on the fence. I thought you guys could change my mind, but I guess not. Well, okay. Um, we're gonna go with the sadly, sadly, the, the, <laughs> you're going, the New England no, Patriots. No, you're not. Oh. Go Pats! Oh, <laughs> take that out of your mouth. <laughs> oh. it, I, like I said, that. censor it, that for the fans. It's one. What player. Hap- It's because it happened to his Chargers last week, and he doesn't think anybody could stop. Let me tell you, the Chargers. <laughs> the Chargers were the best team in the AFC, and they made a fool out of them. Chiefs aren't the best team in the AFC. They Char- tied for the best record. They oh, won the oh okay. So, that's, fair well, uh, that's fair to say. <laughs> but we beat them, you know. The last, you know, whatever. Okay. They made a full out of them. It's a score line. Uh, depending uh, if weather permits, I would say twenty-eight to seventeen. Oh, are you kidding me? Mm. You're giving Mahomes seventeen points. Yeah. Oh my You're god. You're telling me Belichick isn't going to have. A Belichick, game plan? the guy that played the Eagles in the Super Bowl and gave a 40 something. It's the NFC East. He doesn't know, oh he doesn't know how to win against oh them. Oh my gosh. He gave up 40 to the Dolphins. I'll tell you this. You think, you think out of all the quarterbacks, Pat Mahomes is going to give Belichick a problem? Did you see how they played them in, earlier in the year? That was the worst game of the year. That was so long ago. You think? Okay, wait, hold on. That, how, that haunts me. Maybe Belichick. you should think of what Caleb has been saying this whole podcast. He's saying, "Don't let the Patriots mojo get in your head about how they've done all this stuff. Go with your gut. Don't think about oh Brady done all this. The Patriots are too good." You you think the Chiefs are gonna win, so no, you, you I still don't. have time to change it. No, I don't. <laughs> I really don't. That's a bold. You were bold just prediction. debating it like. <laughs> I went in 
<laughs> so I went and had my prediction, right? Of the Patriots. And then I wanted to see what you guys said, see if there's yeah, any stats, any, anything else. You want another Nothing stat. really changed me. <laughs> that they've lost three <laughs> consecutive <laughs> AFC championship games on the road. Uh, That's not enough. Tom That'll Brady be. is undefeated against all the quarterbacks in the playoffs for AFC side. There's only that one, includes, and they, they that, won 1-0. Oh. That includes Pat Mahomes. <laughs> I mean, what goes up? The 0-3 the, the three, oh three for the Patriors never winning. Or then Brady never losing in the AFC. Yeah. Both those stats are not the Something's game. Something's got to get Like, what goes up must come down. Like, as humans, it's like, all oh, this thing keeps happening. It's got to happen again. Like, eventually, it's gonna the stop. one but is going to be one. But when? That's, it's like that's the thing. UMBC it's like, beat Virginia. At some point, a 16 is going to upset a one. Right. I can't the Chiefs so like, be the 16 and the these Patriots. Are, these are they're the one. No, <laughs> what? The Kansas City's the one. These no. are the kind of stats. Kansas City's the upset. Can I say that? Those are the kind of stats that people like us, like viewers and commentators, like to hold on to and make a point at. But really, it comes down to the matchup on the day of the game and what kind of what team shows up, you know, and what the couple coaches call. Like, you don't go yeah, there's some carry. trends, though. The trends are sh- short. Eight in straight. <laughs> no, For that's a- AFC Championship. Eight that's straight not Super AFC. Bowl. Yeah, so this he's Five like, Super Bowls. You don't bet against Tom Brady. You just don't. You did last week. Last week? <laughs> No, I didn't. I was, I was, I was, I was texting no, a Pats no fan. Bay. I was like, we're screwed. No dorm like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to no, win no. against the Ravens because I didn't want to <laughs> face the Pats. Uh-huh. I wish, I wish, I wish, I <laughs> wish that the Colts wait, whoa, 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 wait, did wait, not wait. win. Wait, wait, wait. So let's just if go back. If the Colts did not can win, just go, it would be us versus the Patriots. Can we just go AFC back in the past one year from right now? Or yeah. you, we did a podcast on the Super Bowl, Patriots Eagles, and yeah. you picked the Eagles to win. I did. Yeah. So why yeah. did you bet against? Because it was NFC East. Let's go. Oh. I like NFC East. East. That's fair. I, I, uh, good memories. Maybe it's because it's a really good right. coach that let's, hasn't won a Super Bowl. Let's Reed. move on. Andy Reid. Okay, Reed. let's, Andy let's, let's give... All right, you, he's you not want? budging. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's get... Caleb is going to pick Pat's, the Chiefs. Let him say... Oh, yeah, I already did my two, I yeah. have two four lines for two conditions. All right. Okay. What? <laughs> okay. okay. No, no, Weather no, no. conditions? <laughs> yes. If it's snowy and, like, you can barely see the field... 34-33 uh, Patriots. 34 Wait, points if it's snowing you and you can't, can't see, see the, the field. field. And then it's, it's going to be 3 <laughs> nothing. <laughs> if it's not snowing, we're looking at like maybe 28-24 Wait, Wait, Chiefs. Who's your pick? Chiefs. Oh! oh! So most likely you think Chiefs. I'm, I'm rooting for Chiefs. I've been messing around. Um, with the snow, I mean, it could go at 34-33. It yeah, could go either close. way. But I'll, I'll say for, I'll just get, throw a bone to the Patriots. Uh, False hopes. If so. there's snow like that, it could be. They, they, it's Boston. They you know shovel all the time. Oh, they might pay So someone. if it's clear but cold, <laughs> Chiefs are going to win. Maybe if there's a flurry, the Chiefs might are probably going to have it. I okay. just, I'm just, you know, there's no logic behind this. I just, <laughs> I, I see this as a shootout going either way and figure if there's anything. Oh, I'd so like to see a snowy 28, field. 28-24. Not Chiefs. Oh, not the all right, so the Chiefs <laughs> haven't scored below 26 points all year. So mm-hmm. 28's a fair so assumption. 28's pretty fair. I could say 27 mm-hmm. if we really yeah. want to get yeah, you could. saucy. <laughs> so let me pull this out of the hat here. Brady is 24-4 and four when the temperature is below 30 degrees. Okay, it's definitely okay. going to be below 30. So well, that's maybe that could be 25. Th- it's in line, partially in line with my theory. All right, so my pick here is the New England Patriots. Um, This just feels a lot like two years ago when the Patriots played the Falcons. So you have the Patriots and then in the Super Bowl. Bowl. Remember the Falcons have Julio Jones, they had Muhammad Sanu, they had Devonta Freeman. They were the high-flying offense, the number one scoring team. They came out flying. I feel like the Chiefs are going to come out flying, and then the Patriots are going to just take the game over by their run game. I don't think it's going to be a comeback. Like It's a methodical time of possession yeah. that just Field drains position. you, and Pat's going to get position. very upset and very just pissed off on the sideline, like eager to go out, and he's just it's 12 minutes later, and you're already through the first half, and you only touch the ball twice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all right, so I think that experience here will take over. I think Brady will win over Mahomes, but... Mark my words, next year, when we do this podcast, when it's Brady versus Mahomes, because it will be, I think Mahomes will win. So I'm going to pick the Chiefs in the 2020 AFC Championship game. You just made a 2020 prediction. 
prediction. Chiefs over Patriots in, in 2020. In 2020. Next you year. don't even know what's going to happen. Wait, so next year's... So work. next year's AFC Championship game, Chiefs will beat the Patriots. But for now, <laughs> the Patriots <laughs> will win. Yeah, Sony some, Michelle, we, big game. We have some weird predictions. Yeah. For this game. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, I think that wraps it up. That was yeah. So let's review here. So my Super Bowl is Pats versus Rams. John? Mine's Saints versus Patriots. Oh, oh it's like my worst case scenario. And yours is the opposite of me. I right? would love to see the Rams Chiefs in a Super Bowl. I would Another love 50, that. 54-51. Honestly, really like I would be happy. Not, even, be uh-huh. really yeah, not even talking about the chance of it happening. I just think it'd be the funnest yeah. to watch. I mean, the Saints and Patriots are both good teams. Yeah. Any other combination will be interesting because if it's like going back to young old quarterback, if if the old quarterback beat the first young, say Brady beats Mahomes, and it's not just one guy beating the other, it's like a good team effort. But say that's the storyline, and then Goff goes, the story will be well, um, it could go either way. The young guy beat the old guard, and the, but the the veteran held his ground. So, it, but then if it's two young guys, it's the next generation, mm-hmm. or if it's mm-hmm. Brady Breeze, I mean that's two gener- two veterans, um, legends, you know, mm-hmm. doing so. It, but I'd love to see the two young guys go at it, see those two teams, and see which would uh, would come out on top. Yeah, I definitely don't want Pat Saints. We can't have predictions. What I, what my prediction I do not is. want that at all. It would be close. It I just wouldn't it. be as exciting. Yeah, I can see it exactly. happening. That's but, just, yeah, I, I same. Yeah, exactly. So one thing we got to hold our predictions for it, though. One thing to next. keep an eye on just before we leave is that this the Rams and Chiefs, when they played 54-51, you know, the ratings for that game were super high. So I'm not going to say this is rigged, but don't be surprised if there's some if, calls that go the Chiefs' way and some that go the Rams because the like, ratings for the Super Bowl, the, they want them to be the, high. The course. ref throws a yeah. flag, but a bill of money comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, that was before the game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Good uh, luck to everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Dorm Debate. Our surprise podcast. Yeah, we we're will. back. We're back. We're back. And Jonathan might be here next week. So stay tuned. We, stay tuned. we saw your comments. We know we can <laughs> yeah. get them back. We'll get, yeah, we'll get them back here. in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for tuning in.